lots of emotions to do this kind of filming and because they are so old and then quite a, f a few of them has been passed away after the interview. So the feeling is just we're chasing not only the archives missing and those people they are experiencing such a um, the memories and they, they believe you they take out their, their experience to let it to do the interview. So we, we just have the, the feeling they really trust you. Um, I know that it is important, but I don't know it is so important. Uh, what it means is after we finish the, the documentary, we're touring around in Hong Kong, we meet so many people that experienced uh, in that generation and also in the North America. And then so many of them are is actually crying, uh, sometimes collapse. So uh, I, I want to take a few uh, PPT here to know, uh, to show how, how I found the archive and how they're missing. So this has happened five years before. I can find propaganda like this. And uh, the old paper, um, some paper cutting, especially the left side. And then some Po Gong is the origin of the riot. Uh, when you find this topic, you can find in 1964, 65, 68, 69, except 67. And then the content itself is so not important at all. Just like nothing happened in Sampo Gong. Um, the, the content is just talking about um, do we need uh, the reconstruction and everything and factories? Nothing about the riot. So I go back to 1956, which is the riot by another side. Um, and also the Star Ferries issues. This is two, two riots that are very important in Hong Kong history. I can find lots of documents there, very detailed. Um, even the family background, how they uh, in the prison, everything, all put in there. But to compare, I find 1967. Uh, I give it a, a few examples. So this is a file that uh, you have all this luck here, only one paper left. This is the old houses when they get the damage, so they have the report. And it is also 1 to 10 to 12, like this, only one or two. Another, another estate. And this one is more serious because they have so many records and also one paper. Uh, this is the embassy in Tokyo. Only two paper left, and they are the same. The standard answer for South China Morning Post prepare for uh, a journalist how to answer them and the standard answer advice for them to answer and they're the same just like nothing happened so we take out it for a period of eight months and then we start to do the interview to find different background people uh, to help us so where are the archives gone um, this is another long story so every day we have the propaganda uh, in the paper like that. Even the primary students were there to join the riot, uh, to show their support to the school and everything, just follow the instruction. We have uh, the old paper like that. Uh, and then the turning point is the look from the Wu The 7,000 uh, the sickles and guns. So the story turned around, I, I do it uh, again. And also a uh, very important uh, document from Gam Yu Yu. He's the one who ordered the uh, to order this to Hong Kong for the young people to use. 
But this, we can't find it in the record again. And also in Google, when you search him, I can't find his name. Uh, uh, totally disappear. He also do something very terrible. He make a, a gun, uh, a, a bomb, uh, much earlier than uh, July is uh, 10 of June without any discussion. He do a bomb and then put it on the train station early in the morning without any discussion. But these kind of people, we can't find it in, of course, not in their uh, document, nothing is there. So this is sort of the background, uh, that's just a big highlight, because we have uh, Ching Chung here. He can uh, tell us much more of the background, maybe of the cultural revolution and the current situation in Hong Kong, so that we can have Q&A right before that, okay? <laughs>